insulin resistance, the biggest blunder in medical history. There is nothing called insulin resistance, at least not as significant as thought. By definition or by consensus, insulin sensitivity is a term used to describe people who require relatively normal or low levels of insulin to process glucose. People with insulin resistance, on the other hand, need a lot of insulin to process glucose because insulin has resistance in helping cells around the body absorb glucose at a normal rate. In other words, people with insulin resistance have cells absorb glucose at a lower speed unless having insulin level elevated to make a compensation. Obesity and type 2 diabetes are characterized by, in, uh, by higher than normal insulin level. Therefore, they both are typical of insulin resistance. Usually, insulin is a hormone which facilitates absorption of glucose, amino acids, and lipids from blood by cells around the body. Take a look at this image which is a schematic diagram intended only for you to have a better understanding on how insulin works. This big oval represents a cell. The red smaller oval is a nucleus. These funnel-like objects are insulin. These red dots are called insulin receptors. Note. Insulin exerts its biological effect only while it is docked on insulin receptor. See, these blue dots represent glucose molecules which enter the cell while facilitated by insulin, like here and here and here. Without insulin, no glucose can enter the cell. Now, I have two questions to challenge the concept of so-called insulin resistance. First, obesity is a result of fat cells or adipocytes storing excess amount of fat, which is resulted from absorbing excess amount of nutrients, primarily glucose and lipid molecules. For your information, Glucose absorbed by the fat cells is converted into fat and stored. However, if there is a so-called insulin resistance, fat cells of obese people are supposed to absorb nutrients at a lower speed than lean people because lean people have no insulin resistance and accordingly, adipocytes of lean people should store more fat than obese people. It is absolutely paradoxical, not like what we took granted for before. Second, after meal, anyone, no matter obese or lean, has their insulin levels elevated drastically, seven to eight times normal level in case of healthy people. In fact, far higher than type 2 diabetes. Take a look at this table. Glucagon and the insulin levels in fasting and after a meal. This row is the insulin level for healthy people and this for type 2 diabetes. Look at the insulin levels 30 minutes after meal. 53 for healthy people versus only 17 for type 2 diabetics. And in case of 60 minutes after the meal, 68 of insulin level for healthy people versus only 18 for type 2 diabetics. Extraordinarily high level of insulin to process glucose after a meal in case of healthy people. Isn't that insulin resistance? Sure. It is exactly in line with the definition of insulin resistance. Therefore, 
Everyone is of insulin resistance after meal, healthy or not, or more severe insulin resistance in healthy people than type two diabetics. So, do you still believe there is a so-called insulin resistance, or for that matter, insulin sensitivity? From two questions I proposed, we can tell. There is an obvious problem with the concept of、uh, insulin resistance. No matter lean or obese, to keep glucose level steady, this fundamental principle must be observed. That is, glucose should be taken up as quickly as entering circulation. The higher rate at which glucose enters circulation, the more insulin is needed to take it up. The fact that healthy people have their insulin level dramatically elevated after meal is because large amount of glucose enters circulation at the highest rate, which needs highest level of insulin to handle. In other words, high level of insulin is for handling large amount of glucose entering circulation at a high rate after meal. No business with insulin resistance at all.、Uh, glucose comes from two sources. First, from meal, which is called exogenous. Second, from sugar stored in liver, which is called endogenous. Meal bone glucose or exogenous glucose rushing into circulation takes a high level of insulin to handle. So, what about a liver bone glucose or endogenous glu- glucose rushing into circulation, or can endogenous glucose enter circulation at a high rate, like in the case after meal? The answer is yes, and a similar scenario takes place. A hormone called glucagon, biological effect of which is force liver cells. Or hepatocytes release glucose into circulation, which is exactly how endogenous glucose is produced during fasting or between meals. Take a look at this diagram, which is only schematic. This big oval is a hepatocyte or liver cell, because liver is the major working site for glucagon. These Uh, deep blue funnels、uh, represent glucagon, and these green dots are glucagon receptors. These blue dots are glucose, which are funneled out of、uh, the hepatocyte and enter circulation. Note, glucagon works for glucose in the direction exactly opposing insulin. Insulin facilitates for absorption of glucose from blood. But glucagon facilitates for release of glucose into blood. Keep it in mind, though,、uh, insulin works for almost all cells around our body, while glucagon works mainly for hepatocytes. While glucagon is in high level, hepatocytes release glucose at a high rate. Which surely needs high level of、uh, insulin to handle, just like in the case after meal. Obese people and type two diabetics are known to have、uh, both glucagon and、uh, insulin at a high level. Therefore, it is obvious that obese people and type two diabetics have a high level of、uh, insulin to. Process glucose only because of、uh, existence of a high level of、uh, glucagon, which forces liver release glucose at a high rate. No business with insulin resistance whatsoever. It's time to forget about the concept of、uh, insulin resistance, which has been widely accepted as truth for almost a century, and which also misguided the direction. Of all efforts in solving problem of obesity and diabetes, that explains why is the present healthcare landscape where 
medical science is miserably, miserably helpless on obesity and diabetes. In my opinion, the concept of uh, insulin resistance is one of the biggest blunders in medical history. I will talk about another biggest medical blunder, which is still being ignored later in this lecture. Next, I will unfold my theory on obesity and diabetes mellitus without considering insulin resistance. <clears throat> 